Good work. We're through to the next session. Alright guys, so here we are for episode number 5 of the F1 2014 career mode. Uh, you can see we're through to qualifying 2 now uh, so far this weekend. And Spain, I'm not too sure how we're going to go this weekend. It's one of those tracks that requires a lot of downforce and a little bit of traction as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how we go against the AI, uh, especially since there is a slight chance of rain to occur sometime during the race. But we won't focus on that yet. Our focus now is just to get into uh, qualifying three. We can see we've saved up a set of options to use at the very end of this session. I've decided, you know, because Spain is such a high tire degradation style track, I thought I'd only do the one set of um, tires at the end of the, the session here. So I'll save some sets if I need them uh, for the race. So I'm pretty confident in my pace. I've actually gone for more of a high downforce setup. I was actually testing uh, low downforce versus high downforce uh, in the practice session, and high downforce just felt so much better. I literally only did about maybe seven or eight corners on low downforce, and I was like, nah, I don't like that at all. So I've opted for the high downforce, and I'm inter interested to see, rather, uh, how it goes this weekend. But so far on this lap, I think we're about three tenths down on the tenth place time of uh, Kevin Magnussen there. So we'll need to probably go on for another lap if this third sector isn't the best, and it's not still three tenths down on Magnussen's time, but, you know, we, we don't need to panic just yet. We've still got this final lap to do, so uh, fingers crossed a nice and clean lap uh, should be able to get us through uh, to qualifying three. We did stuff up this first sector on the previous lap, however, so we do have a little bit more time to find. As we can see, we've actually run out wide onto the AstroTurf there, slowed the car down, and it was game over as soon as we left the track there, so there was no chance of us really improving there. So we'll end the session there. We just don't have any more time to improve our time. We'll start from 12th place. And crucially, I think we'll actually start from a fresh set of tyres as well. So that'll give us some uh, kind of benefit heading into the race. So here we are on the grid. Well, not on the grid yet. We're going to go through our race strategy and see uh, what the setup is like. Uh, for the most part, I think the setup was pretty much the same except for the aero. I also played with some of the suspension settings as well. As you can see, the strategy there is a two-stop but I'm actually thinking about changing it up for this race, maybe starting on the prime tyres and seeing how we go, because we do have a 15% chance of rain. If we start on primes and then go primes again, it might only require one stop before we put on wet tyres. I'm not too sure. I'm just trying to think about this, how I can sort of work this into my strategy. We'll start on the primes, and then we'll see how we go from there. Maybe even switch to three stops if the tire wear is bad enough, and of course, if the rain doesn't come down. So there's a lot of variables to come down in this race that we don't know about yet, so I'm uh, pretty eager to see how it all goes. And some different, you know, settings in terms of the suspension and the balance. Hopefully, uh, that should give us some kind of benefit as we head into the race. Just trying to test some things, since we are really early on in this career mode and on the life cycle of this game, we could find some hidden gems in the setup. But either way, the race is underway here in Spain, and it looks like... We've got off to a fairly average start. That's to be expected, though, because we are starting on the uh, harder compound tyres, and naturally, those tyres are a little bit harder to get off the line in comparison to some other cars. And going up the inside of one of the Toro Rosso's in a turn one, and we're up into ninth place so far, getting a bit of oversteer there, as we can see Massa, Magnuson, and Button going three wide through there. And now, our high aerodynamic uh, wings here are going to really play into our favour here through this first lap, avoiding Magnuson who breaks early. I knew that was going to happen, so I just moved to the inside and uh, took up uh, two places there. So we're up into P6. Next up is Alonso. We avoid him as he breaks early, locked the outside front tyre, but uh, unfortunately just gave Vettel a bit of a touch there. I can't avoid everyone if they're all going slowly, which is a bit unfortunate. But either way, on our prime tyres, we've moved up from, I think it was 12th we started from, and we've gone up all the way up to 5th now. So it's a fairly good start once again. You know, we don't get off the line that well, but coming into the opening couple of corners, we're really good at overtaking uh, some of the drivers in this uh, game. So lap four, we can see Fernando Alonso flying up our inside on the DRS straight. That's, of course, because we're running higher aero. We're going to be a little bit vulnerable to these guys uh, if they put the car up into fast or whatever, use their DRS to get past us. So uh, we'll need to watch out for that, probably save a bit of fuel through the middle and third sector, and then possibly just run fast on the straight every single time to defend from these guys. It wasn't what I was doing in this first stint, but as you'll see as the race goes on, I was becoming a little bit more efficient with my fuel. 
and uh, using all my fast ropes for the straight. But uh, as you can see, we're having a bit of a ding-dong battle here with Magnuson, trying to attempt to get past us in the last couple of laps, and I don't think he's actually got the move done yet. Can he get it done this time? On lap 10, we're coming in for our pit stop in a, just a few laps' time. We still maintain our P6 for the moment. Button actually got in front of Magnuson there, so that's uh, a worthy thing to note. But uh, the end of lap 10 here, we can see all the option runners uh, coming in for their stops, except for, I think it was Rosberg, who stayed out the extra lap. And uh, now lap 12, we can see pretty much everyone else coming in for their stop. That gives us the lead of the Grand Prix. I still need to stay out for one more lap. But what I was thinking here was, I, I'm, if I pit now, I'm just going to rejoin behind everyone who got the undercut on me. So why don't I just switch it up a little bit and possibly do the one stop. So what we got to do here to affect this one stop, we've got to stay out for another four, maybe five laps and then take the options about 14 laps to the end. I know from the tire wear test I did a few weeks ago that the option tires can easily do 10 laps without even going off the cliff. So it's just those last three laps. Uh, if I can manage that, I might be able to get a really good result here if I can keep the two Mercedes cars and everyone else behind me. So it's going to be very tricky to manage. We can see uh, Nico Rosberg here going around the outside. He might have got the move stick. No, he didn't. He, tried, he like pretty much backed out of it there. And uh, we maintain first place for now. Lap 19, we can see both Mercedes going up the inside into turn one. There's a three-wide moment there uh, just briefly there. My tyres are really starting to go off now, lap 19. I actually think I'll be coming into the pits at the end of this lap. Um, so it's going to be uh, very line bull as to whether I can maintain this position because through this second and third sector, it's generally, generally being quite a breeze to keep these cars behind us. As we can see, Rosberg there going around the outside, backs out of it. Why did he do that? He could have had the lead there if he would have maintained it. Um, I was just saying it's j just generally been pretty easy to maintain track position up until this stage because the high aero has uh, sort of kept us in the game here. We've been getting really good, uh, I guess, apex speed through most of these corners. And the way that the dirty air effect works on this game, it's sort of kept them behind me and sort of kept them out of striking distance of actually passing me uh, throughout the majority of this race. But now we can actually see we're coming into the pits for our one and only stop. We got Fernando Alonso, who took the lead of the Grand Prix. He got in front of the two Mercedes on lap 19. So that's possibly going to help me here as I rejoin potentially in clean air what I've got to do now is uh, put in some of the best laps I can on option tyres. Uh, if I can go purple, put in some really good lap times. The undercut should work. It's effectively an undercut because we'll have fresh tyres compared to them. If we make up the time on those guys where they're going slowly on their dead tyres, we'll have the lead of the race once again once they stop. And then after that, we can save our fuel, blah, 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 and uh, just cruise on to the finish, providing we don't make any mistakes. So the plan is for these next few laps, just push like crazy put in some qualifying style laps, just burn up all the fuel. It doesn't matter if we go minus one or minus two on the fuel. We can save it later once we have the uh, track position. As we go around the outside of Ricardo on dead tires, he's just got nothing to fight with at the moment. And actually just then I got a message from the engineer telling me that rain is scheduled to come down in about 10 to 15 minutes time. So that is about, or well, just about when the, um, the race is scheduled to finish. So if it does rain hard enough, then it might save me as well because and everyone is going to have to switch to intermediate tyres and it might uh, sort of play into my hands a little bit. So I will see how that goes. We actually go purple on lap 22. So we are uh, fastest of the field and on current merit, we should be able to rejoin in front of everyone make, once they make all of their stops. So we've got to pretty much maintain this pace until everyone stops and then we can sort of cruise, uh, save the tyres, save the fuel and then see how we go. Uh, at the end of the race once everyone else uh, rejoins onto the back of us once again. So here we can see uh, we're catching up to the back of Adrian Satil, who of course hasn't stopped yet. I believe all the AI cars are running two stops as we got the inside of Satil. We just had so much more grip than Satil uh, combined with the uh, you know the high error we were running. So we could even break a, mo a lot later than the AI coming into corners, especially turn one when I was trying to defend from cars that were overtaking me. We can see lap 23 had a few more cars coming in for their second and final stops. And then lap 24, finally, we can see uh, Fernando Alonso, my teammate, making his stop. And that gives us the lead of the Grand Prix. Now putting the car back down into lean, trying to recover some of that fuel uh, through the corners. And Chilton there getting lapped as he completely runs wide through that third sector complex. 
but now for the first time uh, since the pit stops, uh, Lewis Hamilton has actually got within that one second DRS window, and now he's looking to go on the attack. We can see Fernando Alonso right behind him in third place as well. He's got the freshest tyres out of everyone, so Fernando is going to be one to watch in this race. We can see Hamilton has got the lead briefly. We go back up the inside into turn one. We're still going side by side here. This is for the lead of the Grand Prix. We need to maintain this lead right now. As we can see, Hamilton just backs out of it there. I don't know what he was doing. He should have just maintained around the outside. And I think potentially he still uh, would have maintained that lead coming around this corner. So uh, very, very silly driving there from Hamilton. And now Alonso has got up into second. We've got a Ferrari 1-2 so far. It'll be an absolute dream if we could get a Ferrari 1-2 in this Grand Prix in front of Fernando's home fans. Uh, here in Catalonia, but uh, lap 28, uh, we could see our teammate getting fairly close to us there, but not quite close enough to really attack us coming into turn one. And now coming to the final lap, we can see the rain is now starting to come down. The track temperature is coming down as well, and I think in a way that kind of helped with my tire wear because the cooler the track was, the more uh, sort of manageable my tire temperatures became. So it was just a case of just looking after those rear tires. The front tyres weren't so bad, it was only, you know, sort of a really understeery through turns 3 and then coming up to this uphill right-hander, you'll see the front left tyre is probably the most worn tyre out of all of them, but the rear traction is still a very big issue uh, at this racetrack, considering it's not really a big track that you know, is really demanding on the uh, rear tyres still. It was very hard to manage doing the one stop. And considering we still haven't made a mistake yet, I think that's a, a real testament to how much we've had to really look after these tyres. It's been very tough to manage. Uh, don't get me wrong, this one stop was not easy uh, to pull off in the slightest. Uh, the race still isn't over yet. We can see Magnussen has now got up in a second after all this talking. I really didn't notice that. So just coming through the final couple of corners now, and the, the rear end is just sliding around everywhere. I'm trying to manage the throttle even through this final corner putting it up into fast and coming across the line. Somehow, we've won here in Spain doing a one-stop. This is going to do us a world of good in the driver's standings. I believe Hamilton finished in third, so we've uh, cut into his championship lead by 10 points. And Fernando was in fourth place as well. So pretty much a dream result here in Spain. We really didn't have the pace, uh, especially in qualifying. Qualified in 12th place to win after starting outside the top 10 is truly remarkable and on a game where tire wear still is a fairly decent factor uh, around some of the tracks around this season uh, and Cat uh, Catalonia being one of those high degradation style tracks it uh, really is a miracle that we pulled off the win in the end only a tenth in front of Magnussen and then I think Hamilton was only like half a tenth behind him as well so very close race in the end we could see the two Germans Vettel and Rosberg not finishing the race I'm not too sure what happened with those guys. We can see Lewis Hamilton now leads by 14 points. Fernando has actually jumped up in a third in the driver's standings, but that's been this episode for today, the Spanish Grand Prix. Lads, if we can hit 3,000 likes on this video, then the next episode in Monaco will be a 100% race. So hit that 3K like target, and we'll do a 100% race around that track for sure. So constructors' standings, uh, Ferrari is getting ever closer to Mercedes in second place after Rosberg didn't finish in this Grand Prix. But either way, that's been this episode for today. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel to see more F1 2014 videos in the future, career mode, online races, all that kind of thing. It's going to be on the channel here. So until my next video, guys, I'll see you next time.